pictures. I hope you're well. I'm really excited to be back live this week, the last couple of weeks, as you'll know. I've done a couple of recorded videos, but it's so much better to be live. Um, I'd love to see if you're watching or if you're watching the replay, do comment below. Um, so I thought it'd be really cool today to come on and talk about social media. I know there's lots of dance teachers out there who don't really know where to get started, what to post, when to post, whether they should be on Instagram, Facebook, it's so confusing and it's something that really used to blow my mind as well and I just thought it'd be amazing if we can just thrash around a few ideas. I've been doing some research over the past few months um, into social media and doing some training myself and I'd really like to share that with you today. So are you posting regularly on your social media channels? How much thought goes into what you post? To engage with your followers, you really need to post consistently and that doesn't have to be every day. It can be three times a week or it can be every day if you'd like to, um, but you must be consistent. So if you're going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you do that every week. If you're going to do Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, you do it every week. If you're going to do every day, it needs to do it every week. Um, every day, it needs to be every day, sorry, on every week. So finding content as well can be such a struggle um, because we feel, oh, there's only so much I can write about as a dance school. And one easy way that I've recently learned to sort of help with that process of coming up with your content is to create something called content pillars. So these are um, just idea banks, really. So I've got four of them for my dance school. And you basically pick sort of four topics or themes, um, one for each pillar. So the first, um, it could be anything you like, but for, for my dance school, here we go. Um, here's my four pillars. So the first one is what's going on in the school. So things like, have we got exams coming up? Have we got new classes coming? Pupil successes? Have we got a show coming up? Have the teachers been on any training? Um, anything about your staff? So for example, we've got Spotlight Sunday where we introduce each, a staff member each week. Um, so that's sort of one theme that you can use for one of your pillars. And we've got four within my dance school. So um, pillar two is um, class showcase. So this is where you're gonna really um, show off what each class is about. So you would rotate your classes and write about the class and what that class involves, what the children gain from the class, who it's aimed at and what are the highlights from the class in that week. Um, so just sharing a little bit about each program each, each week is fantastic if you can. So pillar number three for my dance school is benefits of dance. Um, and we all know as dance teachers, there are so many benefits other than learning to dance and being physically healthy, there's so many other benefits that children get from being in a dance class. And we sometimes just assume that parents know this, but they don't. So to really pitch yourself as an expert, as a dance teacher, this is your opportunity to share. Um, so for example, um, things like when we're doing crossing the midline in dancing really helps to aid handwriting skills at schools. So if you can share that with your parents, they're gonna think, wow, this lady really knows her stuff. Things like when you're doing motor planning exercises in class, you know, when you do like little obstacle courses, you know, perhaps when they're just jumping from spots to spots, motor planning really helps with problem solving. So, you know, anything you can share which will pitch you as an expert and pitch you above the other schools in your area will really, really, really impress your parents. Things like that as well are great for blogs as well. If you do a blog, get that in there. Any knowledge you've got, don't assume the parents know because they don't. And pillar number four for social media is other stuff that parents might engage with. So um, things like free activities in your area for kids, rainy day activities, baking ideas, dance themed if you can, even better. Um, elf on the shelf ideas for this time of the year. If you could pop top five elf in the shelf ideas, save some five days of worrying where to put that goddamn elf. Um, and there's other things you can write about as well. Um, so things like questions will really help to engage the parents and get them actually commenting on the post. So things like, what's the most embarrassing thing your child's ever done in public? They will all have a story and they will love to share, which means you're gonna get more engagement on your post. And the more engagement you get on your post, the more relevant social media sees your page. So win-win. So little questions like that really help. And just remember, when you are writing your post on Instagram, only a very small section of the first sentence shows when they're scrolling through. So that very first part of your sentence needs to be really, really engaging and exciting for your audience. So 
Um, they, they've got, it's got to make them want to click and read the rest. So again, a question is ideal to start that way, that, that um, post, because then they're going to want to find out the answer to that question. Naturally, when we see a question, we want to find out more. So if you can start your, your social media posts, the Instagram ones, with a, a question or something that really captures their attention, um, that's ideal because then it'll make them click and watch, watch the whole thing, okay? Videos as well are great for engagement. Um, really, really good for engagement. If you're feeling brave, live ones. I know we all struggle with live, I do. Um, but also pre-recorded ones are also just as good. They get really good engagement. So the next thing I want to talk about is your images. And obviously images of your own pupils is the ideal. Because um, it gives a real look into what your dance school's like, what your studio's like, um, the types of children that you've got coming in and out of the classes for each class, you know, what age groups in this class and that sort of thing. But just make sure you've got written parental consent as ever. Um, however, if you are struggling to get images, because sometimes in class you just don't get a nice shiny photo and you haven't got time to stop and take photos every two minutes, there are places where you can get free images. Um, some of them you have to subscribe a monthly thing to to get the images, but it works out not too bad. So places like Canva, Shutterstock and freeimages.com, I've got really good dance images from those before. Um, so those are really great go-tos if you're struggling for images. I tend to keep a whole bank of photos on my computer and every now and again I'll just scroll back through from all the shows, all the exams, all the presentations we've done and just pick out some really good ones. Um, those images that you save as well from past shows and award ceremonies and things like that are really good for like Throwback Thursday, um, you know, because people love remembering all the great memories you've made for them at dance. So if you go throwback to when we did the show in 2000 and whatever, they'll love it, they'll get comments in. Um, so, once you've got your images, you want to really look for ones that are really engaging, so with just one or two children in, really smiley, happy faces, um, we don't want big groups of children, okay? And I know some schools think, oh, it's impressive because it's like we've got loads of students then, but it doesn't engage with the audience. It's the face. We want to emotionally engage with what we're looking at. And if we can see two really happy, smiley children, that's going to um, connect with us more on an emotional level than a whole big row of children whose faces you can't even see. So if you can get images with just one or two kids, ideal, really, really ideal. Um, so, you know, have a flip through, and when you're taking pictures as well, keep that in mind. Um, and if you're using an iPhone as well, try and use portrait mode, because it really, um, when you're taking pictures in portrait mo mode, it really, really boosts the image of the, the subject or the person, and then the background um, isn't so prominent as well. So I found that's really great for taking pictures to use. So the other area I think people struggle with is when to post. Um, and it's, it's hard to know when, because you just don't know, do you, until you've put it out there. Um, we have got on Instagram, just underneath your profile, is the insights bit. So you can go in there and you can see when your posts were posted and what, how many sort of engagements they got. Um, and you can see there, like whether the pictures, the videos, what sort of ones got the most engagement as well. But if you haven't got a ton of time and you just wanna know sort of straight away which post, you know, when to post and you're not sure, there's a really good app called when to post, it's literally called that, connects to your social media channels and it will tell you when it's a good time to post and what, you know, the sort of engagement you're going to get at that time and when not to post. So that's brilliant because it just makes your job really easy. You just pick one of the times, I think it comes up with like three time suggestions for when to post and three time suggestions for when not to post um, and it'll be able to tell, you know, the time when people are most likely fat scrolling. Failing that, think about when people will be fat scrolling. So it's not going to be in the morning when they're rushing around trying to do the school run. It'll be lunchtime. It'll be the evening when kids have gone to bed. Um, so that's another way just to get to, to get an idea of when people are going to be looking. Um, so that app again was called When to Post. If you're you're wanting to download that one, um, another way to get some more engagement with your posts, um, because again, if you're the more engagement you get, the more relevant you're seen on social media. Um, so. Once your post has been um, been popped up, another great way to get the engagement is to share it to your story. So if you're on Instagram, just underneath your post, if you click on it, there's a little arrow, um, and that's to share it to your story. And you can share it to your story, and there's little captions you can put on, like tap here, you can write things like new post, um, and you always do wanna have that call to action if you can. So I think there's tap here, click here, 
there's all sorts of different ones you can use on there. Um, so as people are scrolling through stories, because they tend to scroll through stories more than they do the feed, um, it will just encourage them to then go and look at your posts. Okay, the more engagement you can get on the post, the better. The higher that the social media um, places are gonna, are gonna rank you because they see you as more relevant, the more engagement you're getting because you're making their, their platform um, used by people. Okay, the more engagement you can get, the better. They'll love you even more. So tap the little arrow, share it to your story, pop a call to action, so a tap here, new post, click here, whatever you wanna do. So the final thing, well, one of the final things I want to share is scheduling. Um, so there's absolutely tons of schedulers out there. Um, there's paid ones, there's free ones, and obviously you do get what you pay for. The more you are willing to pay for it, the more options you've got with how you can do things. And it's just really a case of finding the one that you like. I've tried about four or five, and I've sort of settled on the ones I like now. Um, but some of the sort of easy to use ones that I found are Hootsuite, Later, Tailwind and Meet Edgar. So they're all really good ones to use. Um, Meet Edgar, I don't think, used to do Instagram, but I think they do now, but you'll need to double check that. Um, and I find doing my social media once a week, week sorry, is, is easier than um, trying to do it every day or doing it once a month. That works for me. I sit down once a week, bash out a load of posts for the next week, and that really works for me. However, I know lots of people who will sit down and schedule the whole month. But however you want to do it, and either way is fine, there's no right or wrong here, the first thing that I like to do is scheduling any events, okay, because you don't want to miss those. If there's National Ballet Day coming up, if there's International Tap Day, if you've got a show coming up, you, you want to get those posts in first, and then you'll use your content pillars to fill in the other days, okay, so events and exciting stuff first, schedule all those in, and then use your content pillars to sort of pad out the other posts. Um, and then next thing is hashtags, which I know lots of people like me didn't really have a clue what this is all about um, until I started to delve a bit deeper. So hashtags, I kind of like to think them, of them like categories. So they're like categories for Instagram. And you can use up to 30 um, when you're posting. I tend to put what the post is about. So dance classes, obviously, or something else, or cheerleading classes, or preschool ballet, or activities for children, a feeling if there's one link to that post, so feel if you're posting about your show date being released, feeling excited, hashtag feeling excited, um, and where your post is, so you can put hashtag I'm in Vista here, so Vista, or hashtag Oxfordshire, or um, we've got a couple of um, hashtags around here that are really um, used quite a lot, so we've got hashtag healthy Vista, hashtag get Oxfordshire active, um, so you want to aim for things like that. Now, if you're struggling to get ideas for hashtags, and try and use the 30 if you can, because you're going to appear in more places the more hashtags you use, because the more categories you're going to sit into. If you're struggling for hashtags, what you can do is there's um, sites like Hashtagify, um, or there's an app called Hashtag Expert. That's a really good one. And you can pop in sort of your theme or your idea and it will come up with loads for um, loads of other hashtags and it will tell you sort of how popular they are and um, so you can choose a mix of really popular ones, medium ones um, so that's hashtagify and hashtag expert um, so both of those are good to find hashtag ideas because sometimes I honestly sit there and think oh my god um, so for some you know you could put like hashtag dance life that's quite a popular one um, hashtag um, kids that dance or hashtag dancers of Instagram, things like that you want to choose. But yeah, make it relevant to your area as well that you live in because that's who you're hoping to reach, are the people in your area, okay? Um, and then if you are really, really interested, if you found this stuff helpful today, um, two people that I could really suggest you follow on Instagram, if you've got the time, uh, are um, Kat Caroy and Elise Dharma. I'll pop their names in the links below. Um, they share so much good stuff on, about Instagram and social media on their Instagram. And if you go onto their websites, you can sign up for their newsletters and there's amazing stuff in there. And they just keep you on top of all the trends and all the stuff's coming in. Because just when you think you've got it sorted and you know what you're doing with social media, something else comes out, like Reels. Where did that come from? And Guides, this week we had Guides come out as well. Oh, sorry, that was last week, Guides. Um, Instagram guides. Um, so there's always new stuff to keep on top of and that's their passion and that's what they love to do. 
And if you can't afford to hire an expert, go and find the experts and seek out what free information they're giving away because it's really, really useful. So that was um, Elise Dharma and Kat Caroy, um, two amazing ladies who are just on top of the whole social media game. Um, I really, really hope um, today's training has been helpful. I'm really trying to cover subjects which I think you might struggle with as a dance teacher. Um, I know you're all absolutely amazing teachers, but I would love to know what bits you are struggling with with running your studio. So for me, it was social media, and about a year ago, I sat down and thought, right, I'm gonna get my head around this, and I spent a year you know, figuring it out and figuring out how to um, best utilize this free advertising, because that's what it is, it's free advertising. We don't have to pay for it. You know, when you're posting on your page, it's completely free, so why not make the most out of it? Um, but if there's anything else you want me to cover in these weekly sessions, I'm going to keep going on Thursdays, every Thursday, until you no longer need me. <laughs> we'll keep coming on. And um, just drop in the comments below. If there's anything you want me to cover that you're really struggling with in your school, let me know. Um, I'd love to help. And on Monday, if you're one of our paid for Dance Teacher Tribe members, I'm going to be doing one of our Zoom trainings, and it's going to be 10 fast and free ways to fill your dance classes. That's going to be a really good one. Um, it's not too late to join us, so if you'd like to find out more about how to become a tribe member and join our training on Monday, please comment below. Uh, we'd love to have you. It's super cheap at the moment. It's just £47 for the whole year. You get your T-shirt. I don't know if I've got one to show, actually. Let me get one out. I've got a T-shirt here. Um, so you get a t-shirt like this, which have been sent out to the existing members this week. We have a bit of a delay on these, actually. So you get your t-shirt, and on the back it says, I'm a dance teacher. What's your superpower? Because we are all super amazing. Um, and you also get your little tote bag as well. Um, when you sign up, so that'll be posted to you. I cover the shipping for those. Those are completely free. You get those when you sign up. Um, and also you get to be a part of our, our training sessions. We tend to do around nine each year via Zoom. It's a chance where you get some more one-to-one -one time with me um, without a massive group. It's not live, so you can stop and ask me questions. We cover a whole variety of subjects around running your studio, how to systemize it. Um, so it'd be great to have you there. Um, after lockdown, we really, really need to up our game to come back twice and fit in the new year. So you really can't not join the tribe because it's a a really good time to join now because we're going to get everybody ready and raring to go to come out of lockdown in January and absolutely smash 2021. But have an amazing day everyone, stay safe, keep dancing, thank you for joining me, don't forget to comment below um, if you're watching it on replay, hashtag replay, and stay safe everyone, lots of love, bye.